Hello everybody, welcome back to another tech tip here at 45 Drives, or I guess today more of a tech update. Um, we want to talk about something we've been working on using Intel ProArc GPUs and their virtualization capabilities, Proxmox and our servers. Uh, we've been working on some open source license free VDI solutions. We want to show you where we're at. <laughs> All right, so this is a fun one today. So what are we gonna talk about? Uh, we'll just do a little overview of what VDI is and what I'm even talking about. Um, we'll give a little talk about where it fits in the applications of like the Enterprise Studio Home Lab. Um, we've got a demo showing you where we're at so far. And uh, yeah, so it's not really a release video, more of an update video, because there's a lot of good stuff to come, but VDI, another acronym, Virtual Desktop Infrastructure. Not a new concept, been around for a long time. The idea of a hypervisor virtual machine somewhere in a server room or a data center and workers or users are at a desk, whether at a thin client or their actual desktop, and they're connecting to their virtual machine over the network. That's what VDI is. Okay, so if you said VDI is nothing new, what are we even talking about here today? Uh, great point. So the idea of connecting to your virtual machine over the network and getting display, get that out of the box of Proxmox. Use Spice, use VNC. Screw it, you can even use RDP if you've got Windows. There's numerous ways you can connect to a virtual machine. The, the trick is, the thing that makes this useful is you actually kind of want some GPU. You want some graphics processing power in the virtual machine as well. And there's a big whole story there, but pretty much where we're at right now, there's only two ways to do that, kind of. You either take a GPU and you pass through the whole thing to the virtual machine, and then it's like you have your virtual machine has a full graphics card. That's nice, but not very practical. You can only put so many GPUs in a box, and if you want to have hundreds of VMs um, using one GPU, not gonna fly. The other current way it's really done at scale is uh, NVIDIA. NVIDIA owns this. They've, they've got uh, great um, hardware and software that allows you to carve up the GPU much like you would a, a CPU and provide virtual slices of it. To a virtual machine. Um, the problem with the NVIDIA solution is you can't actually buy the NVIDIA solution. You can only rent it. So that's a quote from Wendell Wilson. I love the way he said it because you can only rent it from them. There's licensing around it. You got to update it. And honestly, if you've tried to buy it, it's not very easy. So it's a pain. The current way of doing VDI with enough graphics power to do anything useful, whether you're uh, using CAD for SolidWorks, whether you want to I don't know, play video games or uh, studio line, you want to uh, video edit remotely and everything like that, you need remote GPU power. And it's not a great way to do that right now. All right, so with the current lay of the land out there, it's clear that there would be great if there was a kind of open source based, license free way to slice up GPUs and give it to my, all my VMs so I can use it for all those applications I mentioned. Um, there is a way to do that now. And Intel actually has put out a series of cards, GPU cards, called their ProArc series. And using these cards, in combination with Proxmox, we're able to now slice up a, a GPU into its little vGPU pieces, to use NVIDIA speech, um, to give a virtual machine slices of it, and then we can have multiple virtual machines share one GPU using open source software like Proxmox and no licensing to get this done. Big really excited. So with that all out of the way, we want to show you where we're at with it. Um, but before we get to the demo, let me talk about just like where the application of VDI can fit as per like the multiple channels of 45 drives. Okay, so let's talk about the, kind of the three brand, like Enterprise, Home Lab, and the Studio, 45 Studio. And they all kind of, they can all use this core VDI technology uh, using this open source license free uh, backend, but for different use cases. I'm thinking in the enterprise, personally, across, across the way at our other building here at Protocase, um, our sister company, a um, lot of CAD work, a lot of solid works, a lot of big beefy machines that they need to do their work. So this would be a great application for them to consolidate, get some high availability and share seats around for us here locally and for our remote offices elsewhere uh, in the continent. If you want to talk home lab, be a great place to spin up a video game server, put some uh, steam and some good um, power behind your Windows machines there and maybe you got a nice OLED screen in your living room like myself that you want to actually remote in and use use that 
cool use of that. And with Studio, all your video editing and, and the graphics intense software that is required to do that, you can work remotely. You can, you can travel on site and with a good enough internet connection, like connect to your VM at home and not have to drag your big desktop home everywhere. There's, there's applications in all three aspects and it all starts with a solid solution. Okay, so with that kind of preamble out of the way, let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at Proxmox here, the demo and how we've got this currently set up with an Intel ProArc B50, a Proxinator storage server, and uh, Proxmox. So let's take a look. Okay, so here we are sitting at the Proxmox at the server I was just talking about. So in this machine, I have my Proxinator. Well, the machine is a Proxinator, sorry. I have an Intel ProArc B50 installed. Um, we have a custom kernel running here because a fun little tidbit of all this is it's a little bleeding edge all the support for enabling the SRIOV features that's what allows the vgp the virtualization of the gpu to work is uh upstream in the kernel and we're still waiting for intel to kind of bleed it back in so we're running the bleeding edge kernel 6.17 um if you want to set this up at home good luck no i'm just kidding it's not that bad um but uh, there's a great forum post from Wendell at Level 1 Techs that kind of, well, actually does give the recipe on how to get going here. Wendell, actually, i got to give Wendell a shout out. I didn't do that earlier. He is, as always, the kind of nucleus of good ideas. My God, that guy thinks of fun stuff and then shares it with the rest of us. And then it's helpful as we do it. So Wendell couldn't do it without you, buddy. Um, but go check his post out if you want to learn some more about how the nitty gritty of setting the server up. What we're going to focus on today is just like, uh, the results of it. So anyway, I continue. Uh, without getting into the nitty gritty, I will show you this. If we go into uh, the data center level, if I go into my resource mappings, after you do a bunch of black magic to get the GPU to show up, um, this is what you can, this is what you would see where we would go and assign um, the sub PCI uh, virtual functions of the GPU uh, to the Proxmox server. In this case, we've cut this B50 into four slices. You can go up to eight, but we're playing with that right now. Remember what I said, the drivers are still a little in flux. There's a little bit of stability issue. So we're just playing on what's the best right now. So with this now, that means I have four GPU resources that I can assign to VMs. So let's, uh, let's actually look at one of these VMs and see and really feel the difference. So, um, We'll look first at this Windows VM I have, and we'll go take a look at hardware. There is no GPU on this. There's no vGPU on this. We're just using the, uh, the virtual Windows display that would uh, be built in if you spun up any regular old Windows machine. Um, I believe I have a, no, I do, I do. So we have a spiced window here, and um, the little demo I'm gonna show you right now is actually inspired by Windows as well. It's a great way to show it. It's like, we're just gonna explore Google Earth here. So remember, what we're looking at right now is we're looking at one of these virtual machines with no vGPU. This is just generic. This is if you just did regular old VDI, just out of the box. So you get a little feel for, this is me scrolling and I wanna go explore the Amazon River. I'm looking for El Dorado, the city of gold, right? So I'm gonna plot my trail. And um, as you can see, like things are popping in slowly, like I'm dragging. Scroll out quickly, kind of choppy. Anyway, it's not unusable, but like, it's not great, right? If I wanted to use this for playing a video game or using CAD software or doing video editing, this is not gonna fly. So, with that out of the way, let's look at our alternative, one with one of the VGPUs pass through. So I'll minimize that screen, open this up. So right now, actually, a little side piece, um, we, we're experimenting with different ways to connect to this virtual machine with this vGPU. What's the best tool to use? Do we use the standard Spice? Right now we've been experimenting with a tool called Moonlight, which is an open source uh, video game streaming software is what it's built for. And uh, just getting our um, practice in with that, you know, just evaluating different things. So that's what we're using right now. Uh, so here's one of the other VMs I have. So let me click into that, we'll look at the hardware. So you can see right here, we've got one of the B50s, uh, one of the slices of the B50 mapped into this. We've turned the display off completely because we want that to take over and that's what allows Moonlight to work. So let's take a look at what it looks like. So let's click and connect. So it should re resume my desktop. 
And here we go. We're ready to explore the Amazon again. Um, but before I do that, I want to show you this, just a hardware monitor, right? So this is what's in this VM. This is what Windows thinks is hardware. So it sees the uh, AMD CPU properly, like the, um, it's because uh, we pass that through, it gets to use the host CPU. But the fun thing to look at here is it sees a full on Pro B50 graphics card here. We're using a real slice of GPU power. So that's awesome. Um, and uh, let's take a look at the Amazon River. Let's see how it feels. So immediately you can feel the smoothness of it. Like things are popping in a little bit, but that's normal. It's as you zoom in, the, the drag and feel is normal. The zoom out. And like, I think that just illustrates it enough right there of like, okay, I see what the difference is. And uh, yeah, that's kind of the quick demo of what a vGPU looks like in Proxmox. So we're really excited to take this thing further and uh, give you more updates on where we're going. So uh, our first victims are our friends over at EDS. That's our engineering design services at our sister company, Protocase. And we're gonna trial out a couple uh, vGPU desktops for them and see how that goes. So really excited, really excited. Really exciting stuff, but what I, what, what's really cool about it is exactly this. We now have virtual GPUs allowed to be mapped to that, and all it took was a little bit of time, sweat, and effort. No money besides just buying the card. And that's really big for the community, really big for the industry and everything. So, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. I can tell you. You're way too cool.